don't taste. Put your teeth in, Ditton. Today, I'm going to talk about the cost of staying in your caravan, motorhome, RV, both long term and short term. So applicable for people who are full time touring and also just for leisure caravanners, motor caravanners on holiday. While this will be UK centric in terms of pricing and policies, obviously a lot of the principles will apply to our friends who are watching overseas in the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. Welcome. It is absolutely great to have an international audience. Now I'm going to start off by saying that staying in your caravan, motorhome, RV isn't always as cheap as people might perceive because you have three main costs and they are depreciation, maintenance and insurance. And that's before you've even started paying your site fees. Now taking each one in turn, depreciation, by its very nature, a car and caravan rig, a motorhome, they are vehicles and vehicles depreciate unlike bricks and mortar. And that cost of depreciation is something that a lot of people don't consider and it can be huge. It can run into thousands per year. So to bring that cost down, obviously the older the vehicle you buy, be that the caravan, the motorhome, the car, the less it's going to depreciate. However, the more it might cost in maintenance. So it's a fine line. Nearly new is always good if you can afford it. Buying privately can be good because you're not paying 20% VAT to a dealer who has to charge that before he or she even starts making any kind of a profit. Or finally, the smart move, if you are technically or mechanically minded, which I am not, is to buy something vintage and do it up to a modern standard, something that you can keep maintaining yourself. Obviously that may even appreciate in value this is one of the reasons I have an Airstream because Airstreams, even though they cost a lot of money to buy to start with, they do hold their value and the depreciation of an Airstream is at a far lower percentage than regular caravans. And after a few years, that will start increasing again. That's something to consider is the cost of the depreciation of your vehicles. So the next cost obviously is maintenance of those vehicles and not just car and caravan servicing. A caravan does need to be serviced every year. Don't forget you've got gas running around this thing, electrics, just like your home, your boiler, it all needs servicing every year. But talking of the boiler, your boiler at home, it generally runs off one fuel, probably gas, and it's fixed to the wall and that's it. The boiler in a caravan runs off two fuels, gas and mains electricity, so already it's twice as complicated. And unlike your boiler at home, it's being constantly subject to being bounced around. And unlike your boiler at home, which can be built from anything because it doesn't matter how heavy it is, the one in your caravan or motorhome needs to be as light as possible. So you have this double whammy of intense use and lightweight materials. And naturally that's going to need more maintenance than something that's heavier, sturdier, stationary and simpler. And then finally, of course, you've got the cost of insurances. That's just a given. The next aspect is your day-to-day -day costs. And your day-to-day -day costs are made up of three things, and they are your site fees, your fuel for heating the caravan or motorhome, and your fuel for the car or the engine of the motorhome for traveling around. They're the three things. And no one, th one of these three factors can be taken into isolation. For example, a site with higher site fees might include electricity for your heating, whereas a site with lower site fees might not have an electric hookup, you've got to budget extra for the gas that you're going to use to heat the caravan and the hot water. You may consider free camping, wild camping now and again. And yeah, well, that doesn't cost anything. Yeah, but it might cost you quite a lot in diesel because you can't stay in these places more than one or two nights. So the cost of diesel might offset the fact that you're wild camping where it's allowed. So all these things need to be taken together. So with all these costs, the vehicle costs and the day-to-day -day costs, staying in a caravan, motorhome, RV isn't always the cheapest option if you want to live simply. The cheapest option 
is normally to rent a room in somebody's house where you are on the transport network, you don't need a vehicle. If you can find a room for a couple of hundred pounds a month and it's on a bus route and you could just get an Oyster card or something, that's gonna be much cheaper. The other thing to consider is that staying in a caravan or motorhome is generally for people who like their own space. If you like to have more people around you interact in the kitchen and so on, then again, communal living might be more for you and it will probably be cheaper as well. That's just something else to consider. Of course, the ideal for all of us would be to find a tiny house community, which is on a public transport route, because if you're watching this, you probably want a tiny house as much as I do. So now going back to reducing your daily costs, that is, is the campsite fees, fuel for the car, fuel for the caravan. One of the best things to do to start with is to, to invest in some off-grid gear, solar panels, things like that. I've made a video about how I go off-grid in my Airstream and I'll put a little card up to it here. So have a look at that and when you're off-grid, this is mainly for the summer months, the warmer months, you can save a huge amount of money like that and the money I spent on solar panel and refillable gas cylinders paid for itself within the first year of having this Airstream. Another way to save a little bit of cash on your pitch fees if you're on your own like me is to seek out sites that charge per person rather than per pitch. Again I go into this in a little bit more detail in my video about solo caravanning. So take a quick look at that. You may have friends that have land and you can stay on that land legally for up to 28 days in any year. Alternatively, ancillary use of your caravan or motorhome. You can stay with friends and family. I stay with my friends up in the Isle of Lewis and I stay on the drive. While I usually stay less than 28 days, if I wanted to stay longer, I probably legally could if they checked with the council because my friend Kathy feeds me every day. It's tough, but I manage. Another way to cut down on your site fees is to consider a seasonal pitch. Now, I spoke about seasonal pitches last week in my video about staying in a caravan or motorhome. And in that, I talk about the fact that with many pitches, you, you personally have to leave the caravan or motorhome for 48 hours every three weeks or so. Another thing to do, as I've touched on in my solo caravanning video, is to join a club. Join either the caravan club or the camping and caravanning club, or both, as most of us do. They give you access to this huge network, I mean thousands, of certificated sites, locations, and a lot of these are very simple, facility-free, off-gridy kind of sites. All there is is really somewhere to fill up your fresh water and empty your, your grey and your black water. If you can go off-grid, they can be a great option. They can really help bring the cost down, especially in the summer. And then finally, if you're a member of one of the clubs, you will also have access to temporary holiday sites. Now, I find that the Camping and Caravanning Club has some brilliant temporary holiday sites and if you're a member you can use them and just to give you a quick example here so this is 2016 but from the July the 10th until August the 7th you could could have stayed at North Berwick it sounds beautiful um, sandy beach next to the site ideal for launching small boats this is July to August peak season £6.50 a night. Another one here I just want to say is in August to September. This is in the New Forest, which is very touristy, very popular, in Fording Bridge. And this one is £7.50 a night. Now you tell me, apart from CLs and stuff, where you can stay August Bank Holiday for £7.50 a night in the New Forest. So that is something really worth bearing in mind. And a lot of these temporary holiday sites are open for the 28 days and of course you're going to have great community on site as well so it's just happy days all around. So to add some figures, some real value to all of those ideas, I'll tell you what I do and that is in the winter I generally take this seasonal pitch, it's £300 a month and then for my weekend off, my 48 hours off, I'll generally 
do a £100 budget break. So that's a, a budget of £400 a month. However, in the summer, I'll go off grid to a CL temporary holiday site or maybe even go and stay with my friends. And I'll average at about £150 a month. But also don't forget to add £50 a month, which is being generous for the added gas use for hot water and so on. So all in all, I'm paying an average of £10 a night for my pitch and the fuel to heat the caravan and hot water, which, you know what, £70 a week, £300 a month taken over the whole year, I think that's pretty good. Obviously, as I say, you have the added cost, those hidden nasty costs of the car and the caravan, maintenance and depreciation. But overall, I think it's a pretty reasonable way to live. So that's my little talk today about the cost of staying in your caravan or motor caravan. Hopefully I've made you aware of a few few things that you may not have thought of or maybe given you some ideas of how to save money on your caravanning. As ever, the usual post amble, which is if you like this, give us a thumbs up. And if you didn't, don't go and watch something else. If you haven't subscribed yet, then please subscribe because I would be really grateful if you did. Leave a comment if you have any tips to bring your caravanning costs down. And obviously, if you're watching this, have a read of those comments. I've had some really interesting, useful comments to some of these videos that I've really taken on board. My, my potatoes are now in a paper bag and they're not sprouting. That's from a great comment. This video is from a comment. So thank you all very much indeed for your support. It's truly appreciated. And it just leaves me now to say, thanks for tuning in. What do you reckon, Dougal? Dougal. What do you reckon? I think that's as good as I'm going to get. <laughs>